Hello, and I wanted to talk today about the manual process of spirituality. And this term and story comes from Chongyam Trungpa. I may not be saying that right, a Tibetan teacher who came to the States and taught around the world in the Kagyu lineage, which is the, called the practice lineage. And what I really appreciate about this teaching is that it's grounded, it's practical, and it's real. And it also counteracts the imbalance of the Buddhist tradition, which is there are books on everything. There are thousands of books on every sort of concept to work on your mind. But Changyang Trungpa in this lineage really emphasizes practice. You must practice. If you don't practice any of this, if you don't embody the teachings, then it's not effective. It just becomes, you know, something you can know and talk about, but you don't actually feel and do. So it was very much aligned with how I, the mission and values of Hilcyon. So the story of the manual process he uses in his book is he was staying in Oxford and some psychiatrist sent a kid to him, you know, young man. And it was like, all right, I'm here. I need, I want you to fix my mind. I have problems. What do I do? Chang and Trungpa is like, all right, I'll take you on as my student. And he's a, he was a very spontaneous man and teacher. And he was very much about teaching people as they needed it. So he got him to mow the lawn. He's like, you know what, go mow the lawn. Uh, the flat he was staying at, it was like an apartment, townhouse situation or something. And so the, the kid's mowing the lawn. And he's like, oh, this is how like, this is how like they trained that great t Buddhist teacher, Marpa trained Milarepa. And Changyam's like, yeah, yeah, okay, sure. And so the kid's mowing the lawn. And then he's like, uh, do you even own this place? And Trungpa's like, uh, no, I'm just renting. And so the kid's like, so who am I mowing it for? Like, it's going to be all nice and you'll be gone. He's like, just keep mowing. So he mows a little bit longer. It's a manual mower. And finally he goes, you know, you know, I have money. I can just pay a landscaper to do this. <laughs> He's completely missing the point. And the point of the manual process is you can't pay anyone to do the to do the process for you. I, I'm not I don't want to call it work because I don't think that implies the right the right word. I don't like work as a word at all. And not in the sense that, oh, we should never work again. I like the word labor. Like the you know, mowing the lawn, that's labor. Labor of love. Labor's a great word, but work uh, I'm not a fan of. Anyway, manual process is about only you can initiate, engage, and spend time on your spiritual process. No one can do it for you. You can't even pay someone to go to a retreat center and, and follow all their rules, and that is your spiritual process. Even while you're there, you must engage with it. You know, it's not a conveyor belt that they can just send you on. And, you know, even if you take my words and, you know, you try some of my other videos that have some practices like Qigong or uh, horse stance or what have you, it's up to you to do those and put them into your life. I can't do them for you. And so that's the beauty of this idea of the manual process. It's, a, it's something that we must do, must give time to, must allow to be a part of our lives. So that's why... I don't know if frustrated is the right word, but disappointed. You know, I, hear, I, hear, I, get, I get clients or I hear people all the time, you know, I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to do Qigong. I don't have time to self-care, you know, which is an even deeper issue on, on, the, on the first. Like, you don't have time to take care of yourself. What is your life doing? <laughs> um, but not having time for your spiritual process, you know, it's like you fit it in. It's like, well... Sometimes I can make a yoga class on, on Thursdays or sometimes I can, you know, sometimes I'm feeling up to it. Well, I, I put a lot of issues out in, in front, so let's go through them one at a time. My teacher, Michael Lomax, always says, you know, you don't have time not to do this practice. 
and I could do a whole video on the nature of time with relation to spirituality in, in our practice. But suffice to say that you don't have time to not practice. And second of all, I don't feel like doing it. Yeah, it takes energy to get energy. That's something that I learned from Damo Mitchell, where the Qigong practice initially takes energy. You have to circulate energy through the pathways using your own energy first before the practice starts making things more efficient and giving you energy. So you're more energized afterwards. So it's like, yes, you have to put energy and effort into it to get results, you know? And if we're not cultivating, if we're not taking that time, regardless of how we're feeling, you know, it's a, it's a necessity, you know? It's not like I don't feel like paying my bills, right? There's, there, there's consequences. Okay, so you pay your bills, even though I don't know if anyone feels like paying their bills. And now spirituality is a paradox because obviously it's not some harsh thing with harsh consequences. And it's not like, oh gosh, I have to do my Qigong. It's not a chore. It's something very beautiful and profound. But at the same time, it must be treated as the necessity of a chore or a, uh, yeah, a requirement. And uh, that's, so that's a paradox. It's both something that has the fun and lightness and levity of an optional thing that you do for fun. But you also must do it. No one else is going to do it for you. So we went through a lot of different concepts there. I uh, hope you take away from this a little bit more encouragement on the importance of walking your path, you know. If you've chosen a path, great. If you haven't, that's fine. If you're figuring it out one step at a time, that's actually perfect. But a path is made by walking it. That's a Taoist expression, I believe. So, enjoy your path. And thank you for watching.